Thanks very much, Paul. It was a great talk. Um, so now I'd like to welcome Professor Paul Matthews, our second Paul of this session. I think that may be why the AV got a bit confused, um, who is uh, at Imperial College London. Paul has been one of the leaders of the UK Biobank Imaging uh, Consortium, um, which uh, I think you know is a tribute to, uh, to uh, consortium uh, collaborative working. Many people inputted into that, as I'm sure he'll, he'll say, and to also the vision of the funders you know, who committed to what at the time looked like a very ambitious study but as I think we heard earlier today, the 40,000th uh, participant has, has already been imaged. So, uh, Paul, looking forward to hear more. Thanks, Bernard. Well, you've already seen these slides, so. <laughs> but um, I just want to emphasize what Bernard said at the beginning. This is, uh, what I'm going to say now is a tribute to uh, an incredible team effort. Uh, the UK Biobank team is working seven days a week, uh, every month of the year, and they've been doing so for years and will continue to, deliver, to do so to del deliver this study. The funders took an enormous leap of faith. It was a near impossible looking task at the beginning. And uh, the imaging working group uh, consortium, along with many other people across the world have contributed uh, to this sort of advice that helps to keep this on the road. It's an amazing effort. I'm going to give you, I'm going to take you on a quick run through the, um, uh, some of the uh, uh, things that are beginning to be discovered, but I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about the UK uh, bio, uh, bio, uh, Biobank Imaging Enhancement. I'm just going to lead you through in numbers. So there are five clinical imaging modalities that are being performed on each of the subjects in the study. Uh, there are four imaging centers that have been now uh, have been set up. Uh, you see here the target by May of 2023 is to image 100,000 of the 500,000 in UK Biobank. And the progress that's been made is shown in the left-hand part of the slide uh, where you can clearly see um, you know, the, the target is, is well uh, within sight given the uh, fantastic progress that's been made. Uh, it's being conducted across three countries within the United Kingdom. Um, within each examine, within the examinations across all of these sites, more than 90% of the planned protocol is being achieved despite the complexity of this degree of clinical imaging within the tight time constraints needed to get through 100,000 people in this time frame. Uh, there are 1,000 approved projects within UK Biobank at this point. 60% of them are asking for this imaging phenotype data. 23% of them are asking for the raw data. This is, an this is beginning to make an enormous contribution to the science that people are doing. And this is out of date. It was Monday. Uh, today is Wednesday, and there have been many more. 40,000 plus people have gone through at this point. It's an incredible effort. There are lots of words that can describe the uniqueness of this effort. Uh, these are just a few that um, I was thinking of last night. You know, the size is impressive. This by far is the largest uh, prospective imaging study uh, for research in the world. But it's also multimodal. Um, the data is all rigorously quality controlled with these dedicated sites and on we can go about the benefits of embedding this with, within UK Biobank. There are some extraordinary things that have been demonstrated as real tour de force within the field. This was uh, from Carla Miller and a number of colleagues within UK Biobank demonstrating uh, the relationship between brain imaging phenotype measures, uh, that is to say measures of shape uh, and size of different parts of the brain, and 11,000 individual characteristics uh, for UK Biobank participants being imaged. What I want to just highlight here is this is the negative log P scale, that's negative log P50. Uh, this is the Bonferroni correction line for this 2,500 by 11,000 um, uh, com contrast. And here you see all of this incredibly rich uh, univariate correlation. 
Of course, this is multivariate, and we're, only, we're not even scratching the surface yet. So this is work that uh, Wen Jiabai at Imperial has recently done. This is looking now slightly differently. This is looking at the 2,500 brain imaging phenotype measures, uh, negative log P, and each of these colors represents a different cardiac imaging phenotype uh, extracted using um, machine learning methods uh, to segment the heart and large vessels in the chest in order to begin to understand this. Why is this important? By looking across imaging precision phenotypes, we can begin to understand uh, disease, disease risk, and uh, comorbid uh, disease patterns uh, in much more detail than we've ever been able to do before. What's happening with UK Biobank? What's the value of it, um, or at least the imaging uh, component of it? Well, the first thing is if one looks at the 50 plus papers that have been generated and published to date since the data started to be released in um, late 2014, um, what you'll see is that there's been an enormous growth in artificial intelligence and machine learning tools for um, deconvolving the complex clinical imaging data into metrics that have potential clinical meaning. This is really important in itself because these are the tools for the NHS tomorrow. Um, by delivering these sorts of precision phenotypes, there are beginning to be examples just like those we just saw from Paul in the eye looking across gene, uh, uh, the genotypes to begin to identify uh, the sources of population variants in these important characteristics. Uh, Steve Smith published an impressive paper uh, from his group and the big data group at, um, in, in Oxford uh, last year for the brain. New data is beginning to emerge for the heart. Variation in uh, cardiac phenotype across the population, really exciting finding, is is being shown to be driven just as we heard earlier Gara described by variants uh, of genes that in their extreme forms drive cardiomyopathy or disease. Um, it's an exciting new range of development. Now Paul has um, highlighted a, st a study which I just want to come back to. Um, imaging is as important for the eye. We haven't married these yet, but there's an opportunity in the plug I'll come to at the end to explicitly marry imaging of the eye with that of the brain. Remember the eye is the one place in the body where we can observe the central nervous system directly. Uh, it's also one of the few places in the body, as Paul showed us, where we can get very precise measures of microvasculature to complement these large vessel studies I was talking about. This is the study from uh, Google and DeepMind that Paul was talking about. Um, if they used an AI trained on the eye image alone, rapidly acquired, literally tens of seconds at most, um, they could predict 70% of, of the risk of, few, of major cardiovascular events. Uh, the important thing that I want to highlight here is this 70% is rapidly, inexpensively achieved. Here, if one looks across a, a standard method for clinical assessment of, of future cardiovascular risk, uh, which uses, for example, uh, cholesterol as well as a variety of phenotypic measures, um, uh, the predictive properties are certainly in exactly the same range. Um, this actually begins to herald an age when imaging can be made affordable for the NHS at volume and can be significant for the management of patients. Let me tell you another example, which is actually one of my favorites. This is from Jennifer Ling and colleagues at AMRA and the group at Westminster led by, Westminster University led by Jimmy Bell. Here are all of us somewhere along this spectrum of the distribution of body fat amongst our organ systems. Everything in blue here is subcutaneous fat. Everything in red is visceral fat. This was picked up and mapped in a 10 minute abdominal uh, MRI examination that's part of the UK Biobank program. Here we see the upper thighs uh, from which one can also extract um, 
uh, ratios of fat to lean mass, and of course we have the liver lurking in there which, uh, from which one can also derive fat measures. The distribution of fat in the body between the visceral and the subcutaneous fat, between the liver and the visceral and the subcutaneous fat, and in the muscles in the top of the thigh, tells us a great deal about the risk of disease. And they've begun to decode this. Again, a 10-minute imaging examination. These are the risks. This person uh, looks uh, a bit like a, you know, a, a very uh, well-proportioned uh, uh, well woman, uh, has an incredibly, despite the subcutaneous fat, an incredibly low likelihood of cardiovascular disease or type 2 diabetes. Uh, this rather large male, uh, again, well padded in a similar way, but now with a large deposition of visceral fat, has a massively higher risk. This is a 10-minute examination. It's beginning to show how UK biobank data can be applied to solve real clinical problems uh, that are important today. Well, what's the future? Um, I think, the, as I said at the beginning, May 2023, one will be through not just the uh, original 100,000 target, um, uh, but also um, uh, but also some more, as I'll describe in a moment. Uh, a cross-sectional image at one time point is a really powerful tool, as I've just described. But in fact, disease trajectories are complex. This is using a very simple set of phenotyping. Each of the lines um, represents two time point measures with roughly a five-year period between them. What you can see is that from these lines, particularly when one gets to vulnerable periods in uh, later middle age, one can predict a trajectory of health for the long-term future. Some people do very poorly, some people do very well, and the slopes of those two-point measures are incredibly informative. The one-point measures that are being taken now are adding to our phenotypic data, adding to predictive capacity, but in fact, a single time point measure can map across all of those trajectories together. If what we do instead, as we start taking that single time point measure and add a great deal more data that we can grasp from UK Biobank and clinical records, we clearly can begin to narrow that down, but making fine discriminations that are very important for planning and for the patient is more difficult. If we start to add repeat imaging so we can determine trajectories of precision phenotypes based on the same sort of two-point measure that I've described there. We can begin to map people onto individual trajectories and with short-term follow-up we can begin to make moderately precise discriminants. This is happening as part of a Dementia Platforms UK pilot uh, of this approach which will uh, add 10,000 re-imaging uh, visits on with a two-year interval before the 2023 date. Just think what we could do if we added more. So uh, uh, with, uh, we believe that we can get back an additional 60,000 of the original 100,000 group. Um, one could add on at relatively modest cost, given the, end, the, the fact that the centers are in place, um, the re-imaging for another 60,000, making 70,000 in total. Um, and that could be done before a key date, 2026. By 2026, 6,000 of these people will be developing uh, dementias, uh, 1,500 Parkinson's disease, um, 3,000 will have MIs. These measures will allow us to develop the predictive algorithms that actually not only can tell us a great deal about the disease mechanisms themselves, but also begin to be mapped translationally back into the health service. Um, and uh, this begins to describe the increased precision that one could begin to achieve. So let me close by going back to the major point that I started with at the beginning. This is a team effort, and I want to acknowledge the enormous work of the UK Biobank team um, uh, for this, the efforts of the imaging working group, uh, who have given so much of their time to help advise UK Biobank, and I just want to emphasize that they are backed up in turn by over 125 researchers across the world who helped uh, establish this, um, the robust protocols that have set this on to such a successful uh, interim outcome. Thank you. Thank you.